Columbia River was not only a means for us to acquire all of our salmon, and acquiring our salmon was what made the Columbia River people very wealthy. We were very wealthy people prior to our move to reservations. The other important thing about the Columbia River was it connected all of the tribes. And there's roughly 50-some uh, independent sovereign nations. And we were all connected by the Columbia River. We had one of the largest native trade routes in the entire United States. The Celilo and the area called Long Narrows and Short Narrows was one of the areas where people congregated for the runs, the spring run, the spring salmon run, and the fall salmon run. And this was more than an economic gathering. This is also a social gathering. So people came from up and down the Columbia River, all the tributaries. They came over the Rocky Mountains. These were the Sioux, the uh, Mandan, Arikara, who had their own trade route. And people from the coast came up the Columbia River. So this area on the Columbia River in the Celilo, the Dalles area, was a real exciting place to be. And when we had these gatherings, Wasco's had Nicloidy, one of the biggest towns along the Columbia River, specifically for these markets. And Celilo was another. And people caught roughly, say, a family on the average caught roughly 600 pounds of salmon. This was then filleted and processed. And what was really a popular trade item was the powdered salmon, which was kilak. We called it kilak. And this salmon was pounded into baskets. And when it was pounded into baskets, all of the air was taken out. And that way, in the baskets, the salmon could be preserved for over one year. And that's what people came up and down the Columbia River for, were these baskets of salmon. And the baskets were uh, made because we were a trading nation. They were usually made to standard sizes quart sizes, gallon sizes. So people could then choose whether they wanted baskets for an entire year or maybe just the baskets because they weren't that popular. They wanted dried jerky as well as, uh, deer jerky as well as salmon. Canoes, canoes um, were very popular. You've got to remember we didn't have cars or bicycles. We traveled up and down the Columbia River in canoes. This happens to be a replica of a Chinook canoe. And Chinook canoes were carved out of one cedar log. And cedar, along with the salmon, was very sacred to our culture. So the canoes were made for either two to four men or women, and they were made up uh, big enough so that cargo, like 2,000 pounds of cargo, could be hauled up and down the Columbia River. These were also carved to go out into the ocean. Uh, there were whale hunters and sea lion hunters, seal hunters. So these canoes were really, really essential to the lower Columbia River, the Chinook people's culture. And it's important to understand how, how these canoes were made. They were very slick, easy to paddle, moved beautifully through the water. Wapito, it was harvested for the bulb. For the, it was like a potato bulb. And this is sort of a semi-sweet potato, grows in a marshy area, and it actually grows up along the Columbia River, up to about um, Cascade Locks in that area. It was very, very popular because people could harvest roughly a couple hundred pounds. A family could go out and harvest a couple hundred pounds. Camas, um, I think those of you who live in this area know that Camas is out, you have beautiful blue flowers. And that was also another popular root crop that was harvested and processed. Again, both of these were harvested in large quantities, a couple hundred pounds. They were usually put into a pit with hot stones and steamed. And there were different ways of processing this. You could either take the bulbs and dry them as is, and a lot of the Wapato was spread out when it was cooked into a cake form and dried. Then they sliced it into pieces, and those pieces were then put into baskets and traded. So again, this is a real popular food item and also an item for trade. Commerce, that was very important to the Columbia River people. We were business people. 
bear grass. Women went up uh, into the mountains to harvest bear grass. Bear grass usually grows about 3,000 foot elevation in the Cascade Range. And a lot of basket weavers use this. It's very popular with coastal people. They do a lot of cedar weaving, even to this day. And bear grass is one of the real popular weaving items. So the Columbia River women would go up into the Cascades and they would harvest bales and bales of this grass. And they would take, put them in their canoes and they'd go down the river and trade. 